chest, hold them high, hold them proud. Count of three, say word. One, two, three. Where's everybody's Bibles at? Let's do that one more time. One, two, three, word, word. Open up to 1 Samuel 3. 1 Samuel 3, and as we turn the pages of Scripture, let us turn the attention of our hearts to the Lord in prayer. O oh Lord, our God, God of creation, God of love, God who gave us the fruit of the Spirit that you manifest in us and through us when we are yours. May we capture that one precious fruit today, that fruit of joy, as we worship you. And as we treasure the truth that you've written for us to study. Oh Lord, may we, may we just delight in you with one heart and one mind. Thank you, Lord, for this magnificent and wonderful gift of worship. Through your word, we praise you and ask for your blessing. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. Merry Christmas to those you have, of you who I have not seen. Today, however, is not a Christmas message, but Merry Christmas to you all. Um, what I'm curious, I'm curious is how many people in our faith family, maybe by a show of hands, would say that you would love, absolutely love, for 2022 to be a year where you pray with greater strength and greater faith and greater confidence. How many people would say you would just love for 2022 to be that way? Well, you're in good luck. You're in good luck. You're, you're going to be blessed today because we're in a message series about prayer. And the problem for many of us is that our prayers are too safe. We're in a <clears throat> Excuse me. We're in a series called Dangerous Prayers. Uh, one of the things we do at Restore Church is um, most of the year we write original, really good stuff for you. I think it's really good. A um, couple times throughout the year we purposely give you reruns because we think some studies are so good that you need to hear it until you can quote it yourself and live out those truths. Once in a while we use some borrowed content. Um, this, is, this is that time. Dangerous Prayers is a... Uh, there's actually a Bible study written, um, and between the Bible study and the sermon series, um, you'll have six or seven different dangerous prayers that you can use to shake up your prayer life. And I'm, I'm sharing this with you because I want to give credit where credit's due, and because I really hope some of you would start your year doing the Bible study as well as the sermon series to truly live out the, the dangerous prayer life. And I, I love the catchphrase on the Bible study. Uh, it says it's dangerous prayers, and then there's a there's a catch there's a catchphrase underneath it. You know what it is? Because following Jesus was never meant to be safe, right? And it's the problem for many of us who perhaps have a dissatisfaction with our prayer life is because we just pray safe prayers, and if we're honest, we're living with a safe faith. Being really honest with you, most of my prayer life most of my life has been really safe and honestly non-existent for years when i got after i got saved i prayed two times maybe three on three different occasions i prayed before i ate and often it was just so i didn't feel guilty about eating because i thought i was supposed to pray before i ate so i lo and i love you family teach your kids prayers to help them memorize uh, but but if if i only had i only had one prayer right Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let this food us be blessed. Amen. Everybody get out of the way so I can eat my food on Christmas dinner time, right? Um, and that was, that was my one prayer. My other prayer was when I um, forgot to study for a test. Uh, dear Lord Jesus, please, you said you give wisdom abundantly, so please impart it onto me. It never worked. It never worked, except for that one time when I answered B on every multiple choice and got a 50%. You know, um, uh, wait, that's not a passing grade. I had some problem in school, you guys. <laughs> um, um, and, and But, you know, jokes aside, uh, I, I know what it's like to have that kind of prayer life where, um, you know, dear Lord Jesus, please bless this um, bountiful harvest of Domino's Pizza. 
onto my arteries, right? Um, I prayed for my arteries often. If you've been here last week and you're here next week, I just pray for my arteries a lot because uh, I like food that needs me to pray for my you know, and, and that was my prayer life for a long time. Or, or really, how about this? Just self-centered prayers, right? Dear Lord, I want this for me. I want this for them so that I can have or do this, right? Or, or just, you know, God, just be with me today. And, and what's funny is that's still a safe prayer. Why? He already promised he'll never leave you. Right? Behold, I will be with you always. Everyone say always. I will be with you always to the very end of the age. And so that's, that's actually a pretty safe prayer. Safe prayers, safe prayers, safe prayers. And so this is why I'm really excited to go through this study with my faith family on dangerous prayers. Because I think one of the greatest things we can do for our prayer life is to start praying dangerously. So last week we talked about make me bold. And that's a dangerous prayer. Lord, make me bold. I'm wondering how many people have been praying that this week. All week, I invited you to. <laughs> We're not off to a good start here. Um, that was a brave question to me to ask, apparently. <laughs> um, Lord, make me bold. And today, we're going to talk about another dangerous prayer that I'm going to introduce to you as we stand and read from the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, in the first, uh, actually, we're just going to read chapter 10, and then I'm going to go back and introduce it to you in story form, okay? But let's just read verse 10. The Lord came and stood, calling as at other times. 1 Samuel 3.10. The Lord came and stood, calling as at other times. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said what? He said, speak for your servant listens. Now, as you have your seat, um, let me give you some context. And you can see this when you read the rest of chapter 3. Samuel, at this point in history, he's a little boy, maybe a fourth or fifth grader. And he's living in the temple um, with the priest Eli. He grew, he grew up in the temple. His, he was a miraculous child. And his mom gave him to the Lord, to serve the Lord. And so he works for this priest in the temple called Eli. And what do we know about Eli? Eli was not honoring God. His family was out of control. He was sinning, and he hadn't turned his heart back towards God. And, and just to be really honest, this is why none of you are allowed to call my son Eli. It's Elijah. We've got to finish his name because he's named after the great prophet and not the lazy priest. Okay, and just, just fun fact there. Um, and so... Um, Eli, not Elijah, had not disciplined his family. He hadn't led his family well. He's sinning against God. And so one day, this little fifth grade boy, he goes to bed. And the Lord spoke to him. And what did he say? He just said his name. Samuel, Samuel, he said to him. And so Samuel, he, he woke up the first time. And he's like, well, who's that? Well, there aren't very many people for it to be. So he goes, and he goes to Eli, and he said, Eli, here I am. And Eli's like, what do you want, kid? I'm sleeping. Go back to bed. And it wasn't me. And so he goes back to bed, and the second time, what happens? Samuel, Samuel. He gets up, and he goes to Eli, and he says, here I am. Samuel says, here I am, too. I'm, or Eli says, here I am, too. I'm sleeping. Go back to bed, kid. Um, paraphrasing, go read this later. Uh, but then the third time, wait, nope, then he, then Samuel says, um, after the third time, right, he says, whew, this is good, he says, oh my gosh, the Lord must be speaking to me. The Lord must be speaking to you. And so if you hear hit your name again, here's what I want you to do, Samuel. I want you to stop. I want you to tell God that you want to hear from him. Tell him you're his servant and that you're listening. 
right? Verse 10. Let's read it one more time. Verse 10. And the Lord came and stood, calling at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said what? Speak, for your servant hears, for your servant is listening. And here's what's really cool, family. God spoke to Samuel in that moment. He did speak. But here's something else very important is that what God said to Samuel was not an easy message, was it? It wasn't something pleasant to hear, and I think everybody needs to take note of that today. Okay? Let, let, me, let me ask you a really important question. This is almost Bible trivia today. Um, how often in the Bible, there's, this is a number question, how often in the Bible does God speak to somebody and give them an easy assignment? I'll give you multiple choice. Is it A, every time, God always gives you an easy assignment when he speaks? Is it B, it happened three times in human history that's recorded? Is it option C, it happened 100 times? Or is it option D, a big, big, bold zero? God never, in Scripture, gives them the easy assignment, right? Hey, Noah, I want you to build an ark. What's an ark? Well, it's a big boat about a football stadium and a half. And Noah, what I want you to do is I don't want you to just build an ark. I want you to get two of every animal, male and female, and load all of them into that boat, and then seven of every clean animal. I'm going to flood the world, and you and your family are going to repopulate the earth because I'm going to wipe everything out. All right, God, um, that's easy. Right after lunch, let's do this, right? Or Jonah. Here, Jonah, here's what I want you to do. Jonah, are you ready? Jonah, are you ready? Here, are you ready for this, Jonah? Easy peasy. Go talk to the most evil, violent, perverse people on planet Earth and threaten them. Repent or be destroyed. Jonah says, you know, Jonah, Jonah's just sitting there sipping on some sweet tea and says, okay, that's, this sounds great. Let's go, I'll, I'll go right now. Or how about, how about, you know, several months before we celebrated Christmas, several months before the first Christmas, an angel appears to the Lord and says, hey, Mary, what's up, girl? Um... You're going to have a baby. I know you're a virgin and you're unmarried. You're going to have a baby. By the way, your baby will be the son of God. And you're going to raise the son of God. And just imagine Mary just receiving that news. Ladies, can you just imagine this? Easy. Because parenting is the easiest thing you'll ever do let alone raising the Son of God, right? That was sarcasm. Sarcasm. Kids, we love you, right? Easy. Easy, 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 easy. No, every time God gave somebody an assignment, what did it do? It would challenge their faith. It would stretch them. It would push them. And, and so, so this is why it's a dangerous prayer, because if we're going to pray, Lord, speak, well, he might actually do it. Lord, speak. His voice will challenge you, and it may seem impossible. So this little boy, Samuel, what's he do? Speak, Lord, I'm listening. Speak, Lord, I'm your servant, and I'm listening. And so what did, then what did God say? Well, I think it's important to think about what he didn't say. He, here's what he didn't say, right? The Lord didn't speak to Samuel and say, okay, Samuel, Hey, Sammy boy, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pour out all of my blessing on all of my people. Hashtag bless. Everybody, right? He, he didn't say that. He, he didn't say, um, Samuel, that cute girl in your youth group who you think is, no, he, he talked in King James. So that fine girl in your youth group whom thou thinkest is fine is going to ask you out. And you're going to grow up, and you're going to marry her, and you're going to have two kids, a dog, a great job with six figures, and a dynamite 401k. Um, and and you're gonna, your job is going to be easy. You're just going to be an Instagram celebrity. Like, just 
hashtag easy life, hashtag every, right? That's, it, that's not what God said, is it? What does God say to this little boy, fourth or fifth grade boy? He says, Eli's been sinning against me. What he's doing isn't right, and he has not turned his heart towards me. He hasn't turned the people's heart towards me. Therefore, what? I'm going to judge his household. I'm going to judge this nation. I'm trusting you, little boy, to carry this message. God says, so I can make things right. Here's a burden I need you to carry, Samuel. And so in this moment in history, Samuel teaches us a very dangerous prayer to pray. Lord, speak. Your servant is listening. So, so you know, let, let me say it this way. I don't want to talk you out of this prayer, but let me just be very clear. Don't pray this prayer unless you want to hear what the Lord says. Amen? Is this connecting family? Is everybody just a little sleepy for Christmas, from Christmas? Everybody, are we ready? Amen, family? You know you're at Restore Church today. Amen, family? Okay, okay. Uh, this is a serious prayer. This is a serious prayer. And here, here's what I want to do. I said to help everybody kind of kind of encapsulate this to the deepest level, I, I want to kind of just take a step back. And let's just talk about prayer as a whole, right? Like, like what, what is prayer? What is prayer? Prayer is communicating with God, amen? Prayer is, prayer is something we get to do because of what Christ has done for us, that the barrier between, of sin between us and God is gone, and we have an open invitation to go before the throne of the Almighty and plead our case before him in communication with him. That's what prayer is. And you and I have the privilege of doing this. And if I don't, you don't mind me being a little harsh, shame on us if we're not utilizing that privilege of going before the throne of God that he has given us access to at the cost of his life. Right? And so this is what it is. But here's what everybody needs to understand. Any real, meaningful, healthy form of communication has a very important component to it, right? What, what's a very important com component to any meaningful form of communication? It's not a one-way, it's a two-way street, right? It's a two-way street, right? In fact, I, I would argue, and I bet many of you would agree, that God has done more in your listening than your speaking, In your life, before the Lord, much more has happened, I would argue, when you listen to God than when you speak to him. Right? And, and maybe, maybe, if this isn't too harsh, I wonder if there's maybe some of you, uh, and maybe me at times as well, um, God ever just says, hey, hey, listen, enough. You have told me time and time again what you want me to do and how you want me to do it. Would you maybe just pause, lovingly pause, and give me a chance to respond? Amen? I love you so much, but would, would, you, would you give me a chance to kind of step in and can I, can, I just, can I get a word in? Because I love you and have great things to say to you. If you'd listen. Right? Think, think about it this way. We have a God who is not silent, but one which speaks to his people. Right? We, we serve a speaking God. Right? The Lord who, the Lord who, who speaks to every one of us. And it's dangerous. But maybe, maybe you're at this point, you're saying, oh, it's okay if it's dangerous. I'm in. I want to hear what God has to say. Well, then how do we do that? And here's, here's what I want to do. I just want to make this really simple, really simple. I want to I give three ways that we can posture ourselves to hear the voice of God. Okay, and here, here's the first one, okay? And I just want you to know it's, it's hard. It, it, is, it is counterintuitive to everything our culture believes right now. Are you guys ready for us? This might blow you away. Psalm 46 tells us this. But first, first let me tell you what it doesn't say. What does Psalm 46 not say? It does not say, be frantic and know that I am God. It doesn't say, be 
busy and know that I am God. Although maybe some of us wish it did say that. Be busy and know that it, do, it doesn't say seek me on the go and you will experience me. Here's what it says. Be still to know that I am God. Guess who said that? God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am the Lord, your God. So, if you don't mind me pushing the envelope a little bit today, how many of us can think of a time in very recent history where we binge-watched something on Netflix or Hulu or Disney Plus or Amazon Prime or Peacock or Paramount Plus or, man, there's so many of them. Can we just go back to cable now? Um, all these subscriptions are adding up. Um, can we remember, or, or you worked out, you went to the gym, you listened to music, or, you know, you did something, that you read a book that you enjoyed, and you just carved out an hour just for that thing. But I would also ask how many of us can remember the last time you just paused and shut everything down? And spent an hour just in play, just enjoying the presence of your Father in heaven. Be still and know that I am God. It's a dangerous prayer, isn't it? Lord, speak. But I'm still. But I'm listening. And so... What do we need to do? Maybe we need to slow down, cancel out some of the noise, and just pause and listen. Right? Th- Jesus said this, didn't he? Didn't Jesus say, when you pray, don't be like the Pharisees who go out on the street corners and pray loud, long, impressive prayers? And he's not saying don't go to prayer group. Everybody needs to go to prayer group every Monday and Friday at noon. Uh, that's not, he's not talking against prayer group. He's saying, he says, don't be like the Pharisees, the hypocrites who go and just pray loud prayers to show off their spirituality. What do you say to do? He says, instead, go to the privacy of your own home. Go in your closet. Lock the door. Put everything out of your mind in the moment and just enjoy my presence all alone. That's how Jesus talks about prayer. So some of you are saying, okay, okay, the Lord's going to speak to me. What's going to happen? Am I going to hear an audible voice? Is like, I don't know, Morgan Freeman speaking King James English to you? I don't, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe the Lord would speak to you. I've never had that happen. But who am I to decree what the Lord will and will not do by his own will for his glory? So maybe. But here's what I can promise. You, if you don't hear an audible voice, you will hear from God in some way. I, I, I've, had, I've had everything but an audible voice. I've had God speak with such clarity into my heart in my quiet, still moments with him that it was, it was this close away from being an audible voice. And I know some of you have experienced that too, right? That you will hear from God. What, how does he speak to us? Well, well, one thing we need to understand is he speaks to us through his word. His spirit dwells with you, dwells in you, and speaks to you through his word when you take the time to indulge in this wonderful thing he's given us. He'll speak to you through his word. Isn't that incredible? God's word is alive and active, right? And what will it do? It will correct you. It will encourage you. It will rebuke you. It will refresh you. It will will build your faith. It's alive. It's active. And he'll speak to you. Th- he'll speak to you through people. He might speak to you through a message. Maybe at maybe at like nine forty-five on December twenty-six, twenty twenty-one. Maybe he'll speak to you through a message. Maybe nine forty-seven. Maybe that was prophetic. I don't know. Hey, maybe he'll speak to you through a, a message. Maybe he'll speak to you through through a song someone wrote, or or maybe through a close friend or family member. I'll I'll, I'll confess something to you. 
Um, Christmas week, I love Christmas, but it's one of the worst weeks of my life every year. Um, this just It's just a brutal week for me. It's just a really rough week for a lot of reasons that I probably need therapy for, and I'll talk to you about it later. We're not going to turn this into a therapy session. But a lot of reasons. Christmas week is, is often the worst week of my life. And this year, I did not handle it well. And um, I'm, just, I'm just not doing well, and I'm just talking to my wife. And my wife's, like, quoting scripture to me, and she's just, like, telling me to trust the Lord. And, and um, she, I mean she, was, she was right. She was just telling me the right thing at the right time in the right way. And, and then, like, 15 minutes later, I get a phone call, and somebody just happens to have the same scripture for me in the right way at the right time at the right place. And uh, the second time, it sunk in a little bit, and I say to my wife, I'm like, honey, you'll never guess what such and such just said. And she, she's like, huh, that sounds pretty familiar. And I'm like, I know, I know, you're always right, darling. And you can tell her I said that today. Um, and, and the reality is, is, is the Lord might speak to you. from Someone near and dear to you. Right? He, he might speak to you through circumstances, right? There might be this situation where you're like, there's just this thing that seems impossible. And you think there's no way it could happen. And then suddenly this what? This door opens. And circumstantially, the Lord just provides abundant clarity. Right? And, and maybe there's this thing that you really want. And then God slams the door closed. And, and then you're like, well, um, in hindsight, you're, you thank the Lord that door closed. Because 10 years later, you realize what that door looks like. And you say, thank you, Lord, that that door is not somebody else walking through that door and not me. And, and you just praise Jesus for the closed door through circumstances, right? Uh, I'll tell you, uh, there, was, there was this one time I, 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 used to, I used to be at the church and then have a part-time job elsewhere, and after my other job, I just was like, man, I'm, I can't go to my office today. And so I, I, I'm compelled, as I often am, to go to the frying pan. There's just something in me, and if you're from Yankton, or you grew up in Yankton, there's a compulsion. Sometimes you just have to go to the frying pan. Am I right, family? There's... There was some worship in that. I, I just, there, was, there was a connection there. There was some worship in that. And, it's a, and I just had to go there. And, and I went there, and I'm kind of mad because I'm, si- I'm seated in the place I don't want to sit. And I'm like, I can't study if I'm sitting here. And so I'm thinking, okay, maybe God wants me to minister to somebody. I'm sitting in, sitting in the worst part in the restaurant, which never happens. I always get the best spot at the frying pan because it's the frying pan. And I'm sitting where I don't want to sit, and I'm annoyed, and I'm kind of grumpy because I'm, I'm there. i got to study, but I know I'm supposed to be there. And hours pass. And I'm like, God, this was a waste of time. I'm mad. And I'm just pouting before the Lord. That's the other way that we are pray, pout, poutably, right, before the Lord. And, um, and then somebody who I've been ministering to for years walks in. And I'm like, okay, God, but I got to go. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, God, if, if they sit near me, I'll say hi. But I'm out of here. And uh, they sat in the booth right next to me. And my friend brought a, brought a friend. And my friend brought a friend who really needed to hear about Jesus that day. And it started out, I'm like, okay, Lord, fine, you win. I'm not getting anything done today except for this. This is the only thing I'm doing today because I do not have any more time. And so we start talking. And we start talking. They're sit- and we're, we're like, being really nerdy, talking over our booths at each other. It was kind of awkward for the rest of the restaurant. And, but our conversation was so good that next thing you know, they come and they're in my booth with me. And we're enjoying dinner together. And my friend's friend got a little bit closer to the Lord that day. My friend's friend didn't believe in that God in God that day until we had our conversation and he realized he did believe in God. He was just mad at him. God may, may speak to you through circumstances. Okay, and, but he, here's the thing. He is speaking. The question is, are you listening? Right? What, what, he'll, he'll speak to you through, your, through his spirit. Right? His, his spirit dwells in you. And will speak to your spirit through his spirit. And that's why sometimes when you just ask, God, guide me, God, direct me, God, speak to me, you have the most unusual senses or promptings. And you can't even explain it, but you're just like, I don't know why. I'm just prompted to do something. Uh, 
Last year, I was out witnessing with, with a friend of mine named Luke, and we were out street evangelizing. And it was another brutal day. Every conversation was horrible. First person cussed, cussed us out, and like she chased us away from her. Um, and then when we left, she tried to tell us to come back, and we're like, do you want us to leave? Do you want us to stay? Because when we talk, you're mad at us, but when we leave, you're mad at us. What are we supposed to do, woman? And um, it was, I need, we need, we'll talk about that another day, too. Um, and then there's this other conversation. It's just every conversation is horrible. We had like 10 conversations. They're all horrible. And I kept getting, going, getting pulled back to this one spot. And I'm like, I don't know why, but we're not supposed to leave until we ha- something happens here. And hours are later, hours later, and my, my friend Lizzie's like, man, this sucks. <laughs> this was his first street evangelism experience. He's like, this sucks. What are you doing with me, Pastor? I'm like, just trust the process. God knows what he's doing. Um, but every time we went, went by this one spot, I'm like, I know there's supposed to be something happening. And we wait. It's late. My poor friend, he, I'm like, this guy's never witnessing anybody again. I destroyed his witnessing career <laughs> right now. Um, and then five minutes before we leave, there was this man who walked by earlier with his buddies. And they, um, they said hi, and, and I, just, I just felt something in my spirit about these guys. And they walked by, they went to a party, and then they came back, par- and they needed a little break from their party. I spent half hour, hour, talking to them about Jesus. And you know what the one friend said? My two buddies hanging out said, I've literally been feeling all week like I need to talk to somebody about Jesus. I've turned my heart from him, and I've been waiting. I needed to talk to somebody about Jesus, and here you are. And when I go home to the next town over where I'm from, I'm going to go to church this Sunday and start reconnecting with the Lord. Sometimes the Lord will speak to you through his spirit. And you may, maybe you wonder, well, how do I know if it's the spirit? Right? Because what, what do we know? The devil disguises himself as an angel of light, trying to confuse and seek and destroy and kill and all these things. So how do we know? Well, well here's kind of my philosophy, right? Uh, if you are being prompted to be a blessing or generous, I just assume it's from the Lord. I've never had the devil tempt me into being kind to somebody. I've never had the devil trick me into being generous to somebody. I've never had the devil taunt me and torment me through a trial of love. I've just never had him have me love somebody and it turn out wrong, okay? So I just assume if I'm prompted to give, I just assume that's from the Lord. If I'm prompted to encourage, I just assume it's from the Lord. If I'm prompted to just reach out for somebody, I just assume it's from the Lord. And, and it's just those moments like, hey, hey, I don't know why. I just felt like I'm supposed to call you today. What's going on? Hey, I feel like I'm supposed to pray for you today. What's going on? And the most amazing things will happen. Okay, in fact, what do we do? We just, we just be still and what? Know that he is God. Amen? I, I, you guys know this. I talk about it all the time. I have a prayer list. And everybody fill out a Connect card so that I can pray for you. Because I keep everybody who fills out a Connect card on the list. And I try to pray for about 10 of you every day by name. And I, my goal is like at least twice a year, everybody's going to get prayed for. And I try to send a message and and I have this alphabetical list. And, hey, I'm praying for you. Hey, I'm praying for you. If you don't fill a connect card, it doesn't happen. Fill a connect card. Do it now. Um, um, and then we'll pray for you. And whenever I go through my alphabetical list, the Lord always gives me a few extra names. Pray for these people. Pray for these people. Pray for these people. And the stories that you get from these people will blow you away. Just this quick moment of prayer. Be still. So what are we going to do? The first thing is be still. The second thing is hard. Be willing. Let's be willing. Right? And I don't know about you, but but often my prayer list is this. It's a long honey-do list for the God of the universe to do for me. Right? Dear Lord God, would you please do this and make sure this happens and do this in this way and not that way because that way it won't work if for me unless you do it that way and God this, 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 this. And sometimes I just ramble with my demands for God. Okay? But, but just wonder, I just wonder, are, are you guys with me? Amen, family? Is this connecting to anybody? But I just wonder, what would it maybe be like if we went before the Lord with a blank sheet of paper? Said, Lord, show me. 
show me. You draw up the plans today, Lord. I'm willing to do what you tell me. And, and here, here's the reality. Uh, perhaps some of you right now, God is showing you and you're resisting. He might have been showing you a long time. And you just keep crumpling up that paper and throwing it away. And you never miss when you throw that thing away, do you? Oh, wow, it might be. Maybe. Maybe it's, maybe it's, I don't know, it could be so many things, right? You might just ask God, how can, how can I love my spouse better? I know I need to love my spouse better. God, would you show me how? To love my spouse who maybe is not honoring you right now. Or God, I don't want to just come to church. I want to be your church. So show me where to use my gifts to honor you. Or God, what do I have to do to, what do I, what do you want me to, who do you want me to bless? I don't know how many of you have seen this, the show Chosen. The Chosen, it just shows a beautiful kind of historical view of what things could have lo- looked like in the time of Jesus. And one of my favorite moments is, is there's a scene where Jesus gets out of bed and he turns and he sits on the edge of his bed with his hands in his palm and there's just this quiet moment before he does anything for the day. And I wonder what some of our lives would look like if we just woke up, we had our feet on the edge of our bed in a posture open towards God and said, God, show me who to bless today. And we sat there and we waited every day until the Lord showed us someone to bless. Here's here's one thing I don't have to wonder about in that story. I'm sure church has blessed a lot of people. I'm certain of that. What if we did that? Maybe, Maybe that's what we need to be praying. Lord, who do I need to bless? Your servant is listening. Who needs encouragement? Your servant is listening. Now, now, here's really important. Some of, some of you need to make sure you understand this, okay? Um, listen. Make sure you obeyed what God showed you last before you asked what's next. Right? Because some of us, some of us maybe, maybe we're like, God won't talk to me. God won't show me what he wants me to do. God won't speak to me. But maybe the reality is, is, is God saying, hey, you didn't even take what I gave you last month. Why do you, why do you want something new right now? In fact, you didn't do what I gave you the month before that and the month before that and the month before that and the month before that. You can't handle more. So make sure that when, when God speaks, we do what he already told us to do before we demand more from him. Amen? In fact, when people tell me that, nobody's, that you haven't heard from God, uh, my first answer is, listen, are you reading your Bible? Because he speaks. He's spoken abundantly. And there's some things that he, that, that's the beginning of every conversation, right? Honor me. Love me. Make disciples. Those are the first things God tells every Christian to do. Right? And if we're, if we're not doing the first things, why should he give us the tenth thing? Right? Paul's brutal to the Corinthian church. What's he say? He says, listen, I can't teach you any more than I'm going to teach you. You, you can only handle milk because you need to just keep being reminded of the gospel. What, what's he saying? He's saying, you guys, you guys aren't even taking the basic things of faith. So why should I give you the AP classes? Why should I give you the advanced stuff if you're not going to handle the very elementary basics of the foundation of your faith? Right? So, so here, here, here's what we need to do. We need to understand that, that we need to do what God has showed us last before we demand more from him. So what are we going to do? We're going to be still. We're going to be willing. And then number three, we'll close with this. Be ready. Right? We need to be ready. Because when God speaks, Christians listen. And when Christians are willing, we need to be ready to go. Right? So think about little Samuel, this little boy. He's working for Eli. He wants to honor his boss. He wants to honor the priest, the man of God. And God says to him, this man is not honoring me. I'm trusting you, a little boy, to have the integrity to carry this message before him, to tell him my judgment is coming and that he should really turn his heart back to me. When you pray this dangerous prayer, Lord, speak, I'm listening. You have to remember, God never gave anyone an assignment in Scripture that was easy for them to fulfill. 
So God may speak to you, and he may reveal something to you about yourself that you didn't want to acknowledge, something about someone else that you is uncomfortable that you need to address, or any variety of things. He, he, might, he, might incur, he might push you to do something you don't feel like you're qualified to do. Maybe lead a gospel community. Maybe just go to gospel community. Maybe it's just to show up to a small group. He might be calling you to do that. Or maybe to go witness to your boss. And the very idea scares you to death of going and witnessing to that person. Or, or maybe, maybe just, just not by inviting them to church, bringing them to church. Hey, I'll pick you up at 7. You can spend two hours in prayer and then church will start. Maybe he's, maybe he's pushing you to do that. Maybe he's pushing you to um, just reconcile and have forgiveness. In a really uncomfortable situation. By the way, can I just tell you how proud I am of our church family in 2021? Um, this is the weirdest compliment ever. 2021, the Shore Church has had the largest amount of conflict in the history of the church. Just good job. The only reason I say good job is because it's also had a record number of conflict resolutions in the history of the church. And conflict should increase as the church grows. It's just natural mathematics. It's, it's just, that's how it works. But it's the record number of times where people in the church have listened to the voice of God and addressed it as peacemakers rather than leading the church and causing dissension. Record number for that. And that might be what God's calling you to do is just be a peacemaker and say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm causing drama. I'm going to stop. I'm going to be the solution instead of the problem. It might just be something that incredibly simple. It might be something as simple as being part of the teardown team after Feed the Community because everybody likes to eat and run and not a lot of people like to stay and clean up afterwards. It might be something just incredibly simple. Man, that last one sounded really good. That last one sounded really good. That sounded really good. Man, that sounded good. Huh, that's good stuff. Man, when, when, when the Lord speaks... We need to what? We're going to be still, we're going to be willing, and we're going to be ready. And sometimes you might just say, say something, and you're like, I need more details. And God's like, you can't handle the details. And you just need to go with it. Because what do we do? We walk by faith and not by sight. And so last week I asked everybody to do something dangerous. Spend seven days praying to be bold together. Today I'm going to ask everybody to spend the next seven days doing something else equally dangerous. Ask the Lord to speak as you obediently listen. And so let's pray that together. I'm going to be on my knees and I invite you, if you're able and want to, to do the same. <coughs> Father God, uh, t t today's message requires an immense amount of submission, so here we are on our knees, or at the very least in our hearts, postured in such a way of submission. So Lord, here we are, listening. Would you speak to us, Father? And Father, as, as I speak these words, I repent. Lord, I repent of, of my busy, on-the-go, never-stop lifestyle where I do not do what I'm talking about today nearly often enough. And so, Father, help me to slow down, to stop, and to listen. And, Father, when we listen, we know you speak. And so, Father, please grant us ears that hear and eyes that see that which you would bring to us. And move us to have a heart of obedience hands that serve and feet that are quick to take the gospel where you need it to go. Because we know there are some things you'll ask us to do when we listen. And so may we be in a posture of readiness with a heart of willingness and a spirit that's still and listening. Father, anybody here who in this quietness senses you calling them to yourself, someone here perhaps who has never surrendered their life to you in faith, Father, right now I pray that in this stillness they would cry out to you in some version of these words, only if they mean it in their heart. Lord, right now I acknowledge that I'm a sinner, sinner and I'm grateful that you're a Savior. And so in that spirit, Lord, I surrender to you. You've been speaking to me and now I'm listening and I surrender to you, Lord. I believe in you, Jesus. 
that your death on the cross, your shed blood washed away my sins, and I receive that gift today. I believe in you. I believe that you will fulfill your promise of salvation through your death and resurrection. And so today I receive the gift of salvation, and I know that heaven is celebrating as my soul is sealed with your spirit, and that I will be with you forever, because wherever heaven is, is where you're at, and wherever you're at is where heaven is. There is no heaven without you, and I delight in being with you forever now. I give myself to you. Father, those who have that gift of salvation, they've had it for a long time, may we cherish it today and listen for your spirit speaking to us. In Jesus' name, amen.